Hi everyone, this is Instructor Hernandez and I am continuing today's lecture since we did not have time to complete it. This section of the lecture is on reading strategies and what I discuss here can also be read in the Little Seagull Handbook in section W3. When it comes to reading strategically, there are certain things that you want to keep in mind. And in this class, we are focusing on writing, but we're going to start by focusing on how we read because it's important you understand what you read so that you can better write about it. One of the assignments in this class is the reading logs, which you will complete after some of the class readings. And you don't have a reading log due this week, but they are coming up soon. And I will explain the first one in detail before it's due. You should keep in mind that the reading logs are assigned to help make you aware of your reading process. Some of the texts that we read in this class will be a little more on the difficult side. So the reading logs will help you better understand these readings and also be aware of your process and the areas that you need to improve in. And when it comes to reading more difficult texts, it's important to note that you may need to adjust your reading speed. If we're reading something that is rather short and not too difficult, then it's appropriate to skim that reading and just get a quick overview of the text. However, when we're reading longer texts or texts that are a bit more complicated, we want to make sure that we're reading analytically. And in this lecture, I'll go over the steps to reading analytically so that you can apply these steps to one of the articles that you will read for the diagnostic essay. When you are given an article that is lengthy and is also um, on the complex side, what you want to do first is take a look at how that reading is organized. So you're looking for what is called organizational cues. And in just a moment, I'm going to show you one of the articles you would read. You're going to read for the diagnostic essay. And we're going to take a look at how that article is organized. When it comes to a book, like the textbooks you're reading for this class, you can refer to organizational cues such as the names of the chapters of a book. And within those chapters, there are likely headings and subheadings. Some textbooks may also have questions to consider at the end of a chapter or writing tasks that you can do to uh, further your understanding of that text. And in this class, we have two textbooks. We have America Now, which is a collection of essays that your writing will be based on. And we also have a writing handbook, which is a little seagull. And both of those are different in terms of content and they are organized in different ways. So I would encourage you to take a look at both of those textbooks and in particular how they are organized. So you can look at the table of contents, you can skim through some of the chapters just to get a sense of the structure. And when it comes to difficult text, so if one of the articles that I assign over the weekend, uh, if you're finding it difficult to understand, in your first read of it, you do have to be persistent. So some texts may take multiple readings in order for you to better understand them. So be prepared to read any of the articles in this class more than once and to give yourself enough time to do so. There's also a difference between reading for comprehension and reading for analysis. Reading for comprehension means you're just trying to get a surface level understanding of the text. And reading for comprehension is useful when you're doing something like writing a summary. So when you read for comprehension, you should be able to read a text and then explain what that text is about. When you're reading for analysis, you're going deeper and you're analyzing the meaning of the text, any implications that text has. You're also examining things such as the rhetorical context, which we talked about today in class. So what is the author's purpose for writing? Who you think the intended audience for that text is? What is the genre and the conventions that go with that genre? 
and the other elements of the rhetorical context that we discussed today. Now you've probably found, if this is your second semester at CSUN, or if you've been in college for more than one semester, that you are assigned a good deal of reading. And there may be times where it seems like it's difficult to keep up with all the reading you've been assigned. So in our textbook, The Little Seagull, there are some steps you can take to read more efficiently if you look at section W3B, which I'll summarize here. The first thing you want to do when you're given something new to read is think about what you already know about the topic. And we do this today in class with the free write. I asked you some general questions around this concept of learning loss and the pandemic. And if you're not given questions about a text before you read it, you may just want to get a sense of the topic and you can do that by looking at the title of the text or if there's an abstract or some type of summary that's provided and think about what you already know about the topic this will help generate ideas in your mind it will also prepare you for reading because as you're reading you want to be thinking about your response to the text and whether or not you're learning information that you agree with in terms of what you already know about the topic or you're being presented with new information that you hadn't considered before. The next thing you wanna do is preview the text. And in the Little Seagull Handbook, if you go to section W3B, it explains specifically how you preview a new text. And once you're done watching this lecture, I'd like you to practice that with one of the articles for the diagnostic essay, which is what we would have done in class. Preview, previewing the text is getting a sense of how the text is organized and structured, and it's also going to help you read quicker. You also want to annotate the text as you're reading it. So annotation can look different uh, for everyone. And Annotation can mean a number of things. It can mean that you're marking up the text as you read it. So if you have a printed copy of an article or you have a textbook in front of you, you can write notes to yourself if you don't find that to be distracting when you go back later and reread. You can be highlighting, you can be uh, using post-it notes to leave yourself notes. Annotation just refers to the ways that we mark a text in order to better understand it. Some people may prefer to take notes on a separate page rather than uh, marking up the text that they're reading. And that's a good practice to do as well. And remember I showed you on Canvas when you open the electronic versions of our class textbooks there's a way to annotate on there as well. So you can highlight the text online, you can leave notes to yourself, and these are all good practices to get into the habit of. They're going to help you understand what you read a lot better. When you're finished reading a new text, especially if it's a more difficult text, there's a couple of things you can do to help you better understand what you just read. You can write down questions you may have that came up while you were reading and bring those questions with you to class and ask your professor. So these questions can be about certain words or concepts that were unclear, or they could be about the information that was in the reading, if there was something that you felt wasn't explained thoroughly enough, or just something that raised questions, something you found interesting. It's also a good idea after you read a difficult text to try to summarize what you just read in your own words. And this is a good habit to get into. It will definitely help you with studying for a test if you're going to be tested on reading material. If you can summarize a text in your own words and your summary is very close to the actual meaning of the text, then that means you've understood what you read and you're likely to remember that information.
What we're going to be doing in this class is reading analytically. So when we read an article or an essay, we're not just going to be reading it for comprehension. We're going to be examining the writing. We're going to be thinking about the issues and the topics that were raised in each reading. So as I mentioned before, reading ana analytically is going deeper than just surface level comprehension. And as you can see on this slide, we are examining the elements of the rhetorical context that we went over today in class. In other words, the purpose of a text, who the intended audience might be, the genre and all its conventions. And we can also look at a text analytically, uh, we can look at a text in terms of structure. So are there any patterns we can identify, for instance, when it comes to headings or subheadings? Are there repeated phrases or words that the author uses that might be important later? These are all things that you want to be doing when you're reading analytically. So as you can see here, it's a very active process. Today in class, I was hoping that we could take a look at one of the articles for the diagnostic essay and practice previewing that article so you could practice some of these strategies. So since we didn't have time to get to that today, I would like you to do this on your own. And what I'm going to do now is open the Dorn article and just explain how you can preview that article. So here I have the Dorn article open and this is available on Canvas. If you go to the week one module, it's located in the homework section. And as I mentioned in class, this article describes a study that was conducted, a recent study on the effects that COVID has had on education. So remember in the Little Seagull Handbook, if you're looking at section W3B, you can see the steps to previewing a text there. So these are the steps I would like you to take on your own. And the first step is to read the title and subtitle. So here we can see the title, which is COVID-19 in education, and the subtitle would be the lingering effects of unfinished learning. And the subtitle gives us a little more detail about the topic than the title itself. So if you come across an article that has a subtitle, it's always good to read that and to think about what that says about the topic. The next step in previewing a text is to read any headings. So this article starts off with a introduction that gives you some background information on the study. And here we have our first heading, which is what have we learned about unfinished learning? So this heading tells you what this section of the article is about. And it gives you a better sense of how the article is organized so you know what information to expect. So when you're previewing this article, you'll read all of the headings. You'll also read the first and last paragraph. So if we go back up, you can see the first paragraph here that tells you what this article is going to be about. And then if you scroll all the way to the bottom, the very last paragraph starts here with, it is unclear. So read those two paragraphs to yourself. After you've read the title and subtitle, all the headings and the first and last paragraphs, you then want to read the first sentence of all the other paragraphs. So this is a longer article, like I said. Um, and as you can see, when you're reading analytically, there are multiple steps involved. And reading analytically does require reading a text more than once. So make sure you give yourself enough time. So you would then read the first sentence of each paragraph, starting with this paragraph. Our analysis shows that. The last step in previewing a text is to study any visuals. And this article has uh, several visuals. So if you scroll down, you can see this first chart here. 
And then there's another graph and these are numbered. So this is exhibit two and then it goes on from there. So make sure that you look at all the visuals, you think about what these visuals mean, how they further your understanding of this article and of the study that was done. Once you're done previewing this article, you do want to write down your initial reaction. So first thoughts that come to mind, what do you think about when you uh, preview the text, what do you anticipate the study will tell us? And if we were in class, I would then have you compare your reaction to your group members. But since we're not able to do this, take this step to at least write down your initial reaction to the text and consider what that reaction is as you're reading through the article um, from the beginning to end. So once you're done previewing the article, you should read it all the way through. And you may also want to reread the Goldstein article that we briefly discussed in class. And you could find both of these in the homework section of the week one module. And then that will prepare you to write the diagnostic essay. In terms of what kind of essay this is, you can click on the link for the Purdue Owl. So this is an expository essay. And what that means is you're investigating an idea, you're thinking about the evidence that you've been given. In this case, the evidence would come from both articles that you read. And then you are creating an argument based on the topic. So if you read the rest of the Purdue site, it tells you the elements that will make up an expository essay. So for your essay, you want to make sure you have a thesis statement that clearly uh, defines your position on the topic. You want to have an introduction, body paragraphs, and conclusion. And in those body paragraphs, you want to support your ideas so you can refer to the two articles on Canvas as well as your own personal experience with this topic. And you also want to make sure to end your essay with a conclusion. And as you can see here at the bottom, a common method for an expository essay is the five paragraph approach. So the diagnostic essay is a timed essay. As I mentioned, you will have to write it in one sitting. So in this case, the five paragraph essay is a really good structure to follow because it will help you write more efficiently and it will help your essay be more organized. So let's take a look at the diagnostic essay instructions since we weren't able to do that today. As you can see, uh, there are some instructions about the diagnostic essay in general that don't relate to the writing prompt. So let's go over those first. I mentioned this is not a graded essay, so it won't hurt your grade. I'm not going to be grading your writing. I will be using these essays to assess your writing and to get a sense of the writing skills of the class and each individual student. So please write to the best of your ability. This diagnostic essay, even though it's not graded, it should accurately represent your writing skills. And please keep in mind that this is an assignment for this class. So this essay must be written by you. You shouldn't have someone else write your essay for you or download an essay from the internet or use an existing essay that you wrote for another class. You are given one attempt to complete it and you do need to complete it in one sitting. So plan ahead and make sure that you have at least 75 minutes. When you're ready, you will click take the quiz. And then you can see the question here. So based on these two articles and our discussion in class, 
you want to use your essay to state your position and argue as to whether or not you think you have experienced learning loss or unfinished learning. If so, what do you think you would have learned if not for the pandemic? And if you did not experience learning loss, you will use your essay to explain why. And when you're ready to write, you will start typing your essay in this box provided here. And when you are finished, you can click submit. So just keep in mind that the diagnostic essay is due on the 30th at 1159 p.m. You can start it at any time. It should be open and available for you to view on Canvas now. So make sure to complete that and make sure to also read the two articles that um, are assigned with the essay as well, because we will be discussing this in class on Monday. And remember, at any time, you could take a look at the class calendar to see what is due, what's coming up, and this will help you stay on track. As always, please let me know if you have any questions. Feel free to email me or send me a message on Canvas. And I look forward to reading all of your essays. And I wish you luck with those and any other assignments you have to complete.